Imagine what this look like. You do not want to be an actor or actress to work for Hollywood, but you want to join tech as a product manager. However, all your past experience are in art. You are film directors, your artists, your photographer, your DJ. Everything felt like it's impossible for someone with those Hollywood background and want to become product manager in tech. But actually, we have someone making it happen. And many people just like her is making this kind of shift right now because it's important to go after the most important career choice you can make and in the long run. So it's time to take massive action today. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you our student Yu Meng. She is literally an artist, a film director, photographer, and successfully transitioned to become a product manager in Cinch, one of the largest company in UK. I believe lots of you guys can learn so much from her interview today and make sure to stay until this end of this video where we share with you free referral job opportunities during this search hiring season. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director product and featured in Forbes. I've helped thousands of people land a dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we talk about tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe, check out a new video every Tuesday. Welcome to the show, Yu Mom. So glad to have you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nancy, for the invitation. Awesome. Actually, I was very excited to this uh, show and interview today because you are someone I really dreamed of to become because someone who's like literally in Hollywood, the stage was trained to become the director, photographer, and artist, and, and DJ. And one day just think, you know what, let me just do something even cooler or maybe less cool to join tech industry. So I was very uh, like looking forward to this conversation and really admired the fact that you t you made a really bold decision. Give up on your Hollywood style of career track and move over to tech and also being very successful as a product manager as well. So that's why. So let's start sharing your journey and your advice with everybody today. And so now, Yimeng, let's do this. Uh, can you quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, of course. Hi, everyone uh, who is watching. Uh, my name is Yimeng. I'm a, a group product manager in CPaaS industry uh, who are specialized in uh, messaging products. I, in the past, like uh, Dr. Nancy mentioned, I worked in film and fashion industry. Um, so when I jump into uh, product management, I actually work with a game company who uh, design PC game, VR games. Um, I also have experience working in fintech. I um, work my, in my own startup for a short period of time. Um, so currently I work in Sinch, which is a uh, CPaaS uh, leader uh, who specialize in uh, messaging. Um, so we, in my daily work, I work with Apple, Microsoft and LVMH. Together, I often work with customers and together we form a very exciting uh, messaging solutions. This is so exciting, Yumeng. You're only over a year, year and a half into a new job. You're already a group product manager and leading the, the entire APAC business. This is amazing. So now let's share all your learnings, breaking in and also getting promoted as a group product manager. It's so exciting. Yumeng, let me ask you this question. Start from the beginning. As both of us discussed that uh, you actually came from a very different background, the artist background, fashion and film industry. So what are your challenges when you transitioned into product management about a year ago? Yeah, that's a very good question because I, in my early in my PM career, I struggle a lot actually, because like you mentioned, art and uh, tech, it's different. We have different way of working. So I quite, in the first um, few uh, months, I struggle with terms like um, agile, scrum, sprint, which is quite new for me. Uh, that's the first struggle I experiencing a lot in the past. Then also I have this difficulty being technical. Tech is technical. You have to imagine uh, when I first jump into tech, I have developers which are much more experienced than myself. And I have to convince them I want to develop certain certain feature, which is quite hard for me. Uh, at that time, I struggle a lot. Um, yeah, that's uh, the two uh, main struggles I experiencing as an art background jumping to PAM. Awesome. So let's dive deeper a little bit. You mentioned, I can imagine how hard is it at the beginning when people do agile methodology, all the product management, you clearly don't know what it's about. So how would you really solve those uh, challenges, learning about PM, all those technical special terms of PM? 
I have sort of three sort of way to learning about uh, tech terms. The first one, the most good one is go to courses, um, LinkedIn course or um, Scrum Alliance course. Um, those course, you can have certificate because I I, eventually, I know people or my peers or myself uh, for the first start, we do YouTube free courses, but those courses you don't have a certificate, you don't have a feedback session, you don't have peers. So there's no way to really um, show and uh, document to prove your learning. So that's why I, I always choose certified uh, courses rather than free courses. Then second one, um, second one, I, I struggle to be technical. I also um, learned uh, by taking different courses. For example, uh, PMA, Product Manager Accelerator, uh, by Dr. Nancy. Um, so the reason why this course helped me to be technical is, I first I know the fundamental skills which. Um, product manager should have. And also I can, uh, via different uh, PMA modules, I know where I am lacking of, so I can dive deeper and even put more resources into the area I'm uh, quite weak. Also, I know lots of strategies, frameworks. Those frameworks and strategies are really good uh, for me to convince my stakeholders, my uh, engineers to develop the feature that I want. Because uh, engineers, they are very reasonable. Once mm -hmm. you lay out different uh, framework and trade-offs, um, you give them a reason, a quite well-researched strategy, they will develop the feature that you want. So I would say PMA helped me a lot with the um, second pain point and help me uh, be more clear where I need to be uh, focusing on. Awesome. When you interview with those companies, you say you learn a lot through our program through the framework. Do people challenge you saying that, hey, Yumeng, you're an artist, like photographer. Do they throw out very challenging, like technical terms during the interview? And you also mentioned during work, your engineer team, your engineering team will challenge you. But when you land your PM job, do people really like make it difficult for you in terms of technical aspect? Yeah, of course, um, in the interview, I have lots of different challenging questions related to the technology and uh, different use case, etc. And in the interview, I think it's quite normal people will get nervous. So you just forget everything. That's why I always have PMA's framework ready. So different framework really help me to answer different questions, no matter how how new and how unfamiliar that uh, question is. I, I can always analyze by the framework so I know which uh, direction I'm going. And also I have my own uh, logic to prove uh, whichever solution uh, I'm proposing to the um, hiring manager. I think framework gave me a clear uh, way to analyze different issues and make me calm in the interview. Cool. So can you give us like some specific question? Let's say, I don't know what, how many questions, uh, how many companies you interview with. Let's say you interview with um, a music company and then the music itself is hosting cloud, maybe has some AI, those kind of technical challenge in it. So what kind of questions they ask? You can use music or any other product you interview in the past, right? As a real life example, right? People ask you something technical. What did you do? Um, I think a very good example is um, how do you uh, allocate resources uh, mm -hmm. when you have limited engineering resources, you want to develop certain feature, um, which is quite typical uh, PM interview questions. Um, the best answer is actually, uh, I actually studied this module in PMA, which is you have to uh, prioritize and also look at the uh, big picture of the entire company, etc. Um, yeah, so I, I think all the framework get me prepared to answer challenging questions and be calm about it. I see. Um, do you feel a little bit self insecure when you go into those interviews when people say, oh my goodness, it's another like tech companies, they're gonna ask you those questions and I clearly have no clue. I never really worked with engineers before. 
what what's in your mind when you walk into this interview to really stay calm, even if you already had the framework, so you're confident because you know what to say. But do you feel like the little like rabbit in your heart? Oh God, oh God, I I never worked with engineers. So so how you really solve those kind of mental challenge? Um, I think yes, definitely nervous for sure. Um, but you can find similarity uh, between working with engineer and uh, your previous experience. For example, I work with lots of uh, videographer, um, also photographer. They are very, they are very technical as well. You can use examples to convince them uh, uh, how would you communicate with technical people, which is be clear and have your uh, framework metric uh, very reasonable, very logical. So you can give actually give examples if um, the, the guys you're watching uh, who are also from creative or different background. You you can always find an example to show the hiring manager. This is awesome. Thank you for giving us clear example. I think this is a very important golden nugget for everybody to feel calm when you do an interview and also give past ex experience, like you would you describe your photographer. But people you work with, those people setting up those gears, they're also very technical with the same thinking methodology like those engineers. But you use those examples to prove that I know how it works. People. Uh, were very technical and sell yourself in interview as a future product manager. This is awesome. Um, now, Rimon, let me ask you this question. You gave us all those like important examples and tips. Let me ask you, what do you think is the most important shift that push you to the next level? Because I know lots of people are trying to like, let me just try, but just give up. So what really push you immediately to say, boom, jump to the next level. So what's the important shift that helped you push you to the next level? I think um, the first uh, stage of my PM journey, I thought about, oh, uh, people have to come from technical background, have to be quite hands on. I have to know everything. But later on, I realized product management is also about strategy. So before you have a really good strategy, if you uh, implement something, it might be wrong. So you, uh, as a as a product manager, you have to have this forward thinking. You think your product in three years, in five years, therefore, and also align with the mission, uh, which also in uh, in the module in PMA, um, this strategic thinking shift my mindset really. So I know. I, I need to have a quite well-defined strategy back up with research. Then later on, every implemented feature or product that I designed will be um, quite successful. But without that, you might be wrong. Um, so like I mentioned, different frameworks. I actually learned a Gucci framework, my computer science PhD and circle framework within PMA uh, program. I think that do help me a lot with uh, different product decisions, which is really changing my mind. Well, yeah, I like you really emphasize regarding thinking long term. Um, so lots of people, we can check out, we have free video regarding describing what is Gucci framework you can check out right here. So which is something I personally invented to design the product strategy. So lots of people only thinking about, hey, I only can design a feature. In reality, it's not a feature. It is, you think as a product leader, how would you think like two years, three years, five years, and 10 year roadmap so that you, you begin as a leader and any small features you work on has an impact and the purpose within your roadmap. And that's how you really beat your competition. So you actually show that you're thinking bigger and better than other people, even if you're artist, <laughs> am I right? Yes, exactly. Uh, once you have all the framework, um, I think you you will be pretty confident no matter which background you came from. Awesome, cool. Yeah, inside the PMA, we go deeper in the framework, and but you guys can check out some free videos right now to get a high level overview regarding what we meet. And um, now let me let me also ask you the question, Rimon. What does the day to day uh, work look like as a group product manager. Now within a year, you already got promoted, you own bigger market, like bigger product, it's crazy. So what does it look like right now, a year into your new PM job? So I would like to give you a high level uh, overview about my day-to-day -day life. The first one is uh, strategy. 
So like I said, before launching any product, you need to set up your strategy using different uh, framework, uh, such as Gucci, Circle, or um, my computer science PhD. Make sure your product decision is right. Also, this is good uh, when you're reporting to your senior leadership level. They want to see you have a strategy, a framework, a metric, so that they can uh, they can very um, trust on your decisions and give you green light, which is quite important in uh, your um, corporate sort of uh, daily life. Then the second one, I do mainly meetings. So product manager, I, I think some of you may know we have lots of meetings. We sync with different uh, departments. Could be external, could be your customer, uh, could be your partner, and also could be marketing and um, uh, engineers, uh, also um, the sales as well. We, we need to think and keep thinking each uh, step. When you have a product change, product launch, you have to think with all the departments. So in this part, communication is very important. Eventually, writing is a part of product management. Um, Here is more. What do you write? How much do you write every day? Well, I write, um, so you may know, I write user stories. I write Epic, which is a higher level um, then I also write product uh, documentation, product blogs, helping our internal and external uh, stakeholders understand our product and document product change. Eventually, sometimes we also have to write loads of email, um, also have to uh, align with different teams. And um, once we, for example, if you have a alert, some of the features not working, you need to write a very comprehensive email to your customer. So I would say writing is also a big part. I writing, see it. strategizing, and also meeting. Question, did you try to use ChatGPT to write some of the emails, just out of curiosity? Um, some, some email. I, I use them to improve my writing, but I always have to proofreading ChatGPT mm -hmm. and eventually send out. Awesome. Hey guys, we have a separate playlist talking about how to become an AI product manager and how to use those AI tools. You can check out this right here. It's going to increase your productivity significantly. Um, now, Yumeng, let me ask you um, last, uh, the last question. What advice would you want to give to people who want to start the product management career? Now, given you already transitioned to PM, now also product group product manager is a fast promotion within your company. So what advice would you want to give to others who are at the beginning of the journey right now? Um, I think if you are previously like myself, if you are not coming from a technical background, you want to transition to PN, um, I think learning, you, you have to keep learning, keep attending co uh, high quality uh, learning programs, um, I, which I highly recommend PMA, of course, if you are, you are new to this. Um, another thing is um, communication is very important for uh, PM. Eventually, you are thinking different department. It, you might want to uh, practice your communication uh, skills. That will be very useful for PM. Uh, even though there might be an area or case you don't understand, you can always solve it by thinking, communicating with your colleagues and also learning from uh, different programs or courses. I, I think that would be a two main advice or area I would suggest people to focus on. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Yumeng. And also, I always love to share with others use different phrase, which is growth mindset. I think what you describe is a kind of growth mindset. Always invest in yourself, continue learning different things you do not have and never be afraid of challenge or status quo cool, because who said that artists cannot become PM? You have no technical background, no business background. You're literally in a very different industry, but you just continue to grow your career with growth mindset, grow your product management skills, communication skills, and now even become a group product manager within a year into a new job in a very large company in UK. I'm very, very excited for you. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Yumeng. Thank you for joining us today. Hey guys, if you find this video very useful with packed loads of 
advice and impact and also lots of motivations make sure to like this video share with any aspiring product managers and comment and let me know your thought process as well this is dr nancy lee from pmswriter.io i'm gonna see you in my next video right here and thank you for joining me yu Meng. thank you dr nancy and good luck everyone in your pm journey